Now we need to talk about the concept of a diffraction grating. This is a picture of a diffraction grating. This is a diffraction grating. Now, unlike Thomas Young's double slits, this is a whole bunch of lines, uh, probably like five or six thousand lines per centimeter or something on this. That's lines per centimeter. So when you look at it, Kelsey, do you see the lines? Yeah. You do? Well. You're amazing. <laughs> Try again. Do you see them? Okay. Aha. Jessica, do you see the lines? No. Good. Because if you were talking about 6,000 lines per centimeter, that's a lot of little lines per centimeter. You can't actually see them. Which is why I put this picture up there. Because you can't see it. Just to show you can't see it. Now, I'm not going to pass around because this item right here is about a $50 item. It's easy to scratch and destroy. So I'm not going to pass around. Uh, so the key here is that a diffraction grating is works just like a double slit. We have a whole bunch of rays all coming at these different slits, and if you zoom in, you can see we have the exact same effect. And what we get is, usually with a diffraction grating, we're talking about taking uh, white light and passing it through the diffraction grating, and what we get is the same thing we had before, only with white light, we're actually separating it into its constituent col colors, because different light waves are going to be diffracted at different angles. So you can see this is going to be our first order maximum. This is going to be our second order maximum, and so on and so forth. But you can see we get the rainbow effect of all the different uh, colors. Okay? So what you can actually do with this is you can take a plain light bulb, and you can take this picture. So this picture right here was just taken without a diffraction grating. But what I did on this picture was I actually took three different diffraction gratings, turned them all so that they were oriented slightly askew from one another. And I took a picture through the diffraction grating. So what you see here is this is the first order maximum. One, two, three, these are all first order maximums. These are on either side. You can see how I use three different diffraction gratings. And then this is actually the beginning of the second order maximum. And you can see how I've, uh, all the different wavelengths are diffracted at slightly different angles. So when you are working with a diffraction grating, you actually work with the exact same equations. So you get d sine theta is equal to m times lambda for, bless you, the constructive interference of a diffraction grating. Now, d is slightly different um, in that uh, this was the um, slit separation for a double slit experiment, but for D for a diffraction grating, it's actually technically called the grating spacing, which would be the meters per lump. The grating spacing, this would be the, the distance between the different lines, which would be uh, meters per lump. Now, the one that I showed you the picture of, this guy right here, is technically called a transmission diffraction grating. Well, I have a diffraction grating right here. This is a reflection diffraction grating. You might recognize it as a CD. I'll call it a reflection diffraction grating because it's a lot more fun. This is more sponsored by Earthlink today. Um, so the way this works is this. On a CD, you have a whole bunch of zeros and ones. Those zeros and ones are created by Hits and non hits, but they are a specific distance apart. So, what you get is right here, you get different lines, and they have a specific distance between them. So, this is a diffraction grating. So, when I take and I shine the light, the laser light, which is right here, you can see we get. the central maximum, right here. And we get the first order, thank you, maximum right there, the second order maximum, I'm sorry, first order maximum here, first order maximum on either side. But in fact, you can see all the way over to the second order maximum right here, and if you look on my cabinet over here, you can see the other second order maximum on the other side is located right here. 
So this is the same experiment that Thomas Young did, only I'm using a laser and a CD.